Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I am continuing my series on taking these amazing, legendary, isolated vocal tracks. Uh, I'm doing a vocal analysis, a singing tutorial, I'm talking a little bit about the recording process, some backstories about the band, etc. Next up is Steven Tyler. Uh, the song is Dream On. Of course, the band is Aerosmith. And this is one absolutely epic piece, right? So uh, before we get started, if you wouldn't mind please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. I have a singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. Uh, I also have a free singing forum for you guys interested in wanting to know about singing, post your demos, videos, get feedback, whatever. You can also find it at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com under the singing forum section. And um, I wanna talk a little bit about this because it's really interesting. I did a version of this. I will put that in the description. You can see how I did, okay? but. Steven Tyler's voice has changed a lot over the years. And this is at a time where Steven kind of had two compartments to his voice. He had his lower mid voice register and his screaming register. In fact, he was called the screaming demon way back in the day, okay? And he didn't really have all the upper mid voice stuff like he did with Angel and like some of the later, you know, sound movie soundtrack stuff that uh, sort of developed over time. So I think it's really interesting. Now, he did have throat surgery and I think Steven Zytels did it. The, um, he's an ENT uh, otolaryngologist out of Boston. Um, I worked with Steven on some other stuff and other clients that I have. And uh, just a really well well-known guy. He's done Adele surgery and Lionel Richie surgery, I think, Sam Smith, some others. But um, now Stephen had, you know, not taken the best care of his voice. Of course, we know about his drug habits and all that stuff. So obviously that played a huge role in this. But he has maintained a pretty amazing voice over all this time. But this is really, really early on in his career. So you can hear kind of the purity of his tones and whatnot and sort of how his voice maturated over the time. So I want to just go right and dive right into it and uh, we'll just take it from here. So here it is, Stephen Tyler. Tyler, dream on, check it out. Every time that I look in the mirror, all these lines in my face getting clearer. Cool. Now, right out, out of the gate, I always say right, right out of the gate, right up front, um, right up front, you notice that he has a very unstable Caprino vibrato. Now, I'm not here to pick on Steven. In fact, he is awesome, but I'm going to talk about certain elements of his voice that are good and maybe not so good. So, Caprino vibrato means goat's wiggle, right? And we've seen this with Freddie Mercury. We see this with a lot of singers. You know, in fact, um, I have a student, Sarah Luera, and we've done a fair amount of Stevie Nicks, and we kind of joke about the fact that, you know, she has to leave the Ken Tamplin vibrato, her natural big warm vibrato, and kind of use a very quick, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? So listen closely to that, and you can really hear he doesn't have a lot of diaphragmatic support in his sound either. And so it kind of sounds a really, uh, really throaty, even in this lower register. Listen close, check it out. Here we go. Every time that I look in the mirror, all these lines in my face getting clearer. So every time, every time that I look in the mirror, all these lines in my face, instead of every time that I look in the mirror. You know, I, I, of course, I'm, I have more of a Paul Rogers, Lou Graham, Covered Ailey kind of a, all these lines in my face getting clearer right I have a little bit of a wider more even vibrato which I've worked on but that actually comes from true diaphragmatic support because if I would um, every time that I look in the mirror right and I didn't have a lot of support kind of anything goes and anything will just kind of come out as it comes out but every time that I look in the mirror Hear the difference in the vibrato because you hear strength in the sound. Now, the other thing too is I think it's ironic. I think he was in his early 20s when he did this song. Every time I look in the mirror, all these lines in my face getting clear and he's only 20? <laughs> what happened later? I don't know. But anyway, I thought that was kind of an ironic uh, line for someone so young to write. But uh, so let's continue. Um, I'm going to go through, let it play again, and then I'll continue on here. Check it out. Every time that I look in the mirror. All these lines in my face getting clearer. Okay, so one more thing that he's really known for is slurring his words. All these lines in my face getting clearer. 
past is gone. Right? You've got this really, you really kind of slurry sort of sound. And that could be, you know, psychedelic induced. That could just be a style. We know that he's done that a lot over the years. And so sometimes it's kind of hard to make out his lyric. But let's move on. Here we go. The past is gone. It went by like dust to dawn. Let's do that together. Oh, it went by like dust to dawn. Isn't that the way? Right? He's kind of just winding up into the sound, but he's not going that high in his chest voice. So it kind of makes it sound like he's, he's kind of reaching up there. But the notes aren't that high. Check it out. The past is gone. It went by like dust to dawn. Isn't that the way? Everybody's got the dues in life to pay. Cool. Now, I know the nature of some of these isolated tracks are a little bit out of phase and kind of sloshy, so bear with me on that because it's a pretty easy track to you know, do a vocal um, analysis from. So now, as he goes through that, pretty good though, good pitch, you know, good tone for his age, especially way back when. Um, and uh, you really hear, you know, his, his good, uh, a lot of passion and personality. It's definitely Steven Tyler personality in the song. And, the, and by the way, the reason I keep bringing up the range thing in this is because this song is like, you know, the quintessential example of who can do this, the dream on scream at the end. And I want you to check out my version because I not only do the scream at the end, he only does it once. I do it twice and I even go higher as a vocal demonstration to show you, you know, that a baritone like myself, can actually get up into those this note registration also. So let's move on. Here we go. Yeah, I know nobody knows where it comes, where it goes. I know everybody sins. You got lose to know how to win. Cool. Okay, pretty interesting. Now, the other thing too is the pitch isn't that's but I know everybody knows. Like you can kind of hear some anomalies here and there, which is really cool because it puts some flesh and blood on all this stuff. And like I said, I've done, I've talked about this a lot. I love to see the humanity of it because it, it it really brings home the fact that these guys had to work at this. It didn't just come out like they work at their craft. And my understanding is through the years, one of the things that drove the band nuts about Steven Tyler, which was also true, by the way, I want to um. I talk about Axl Rose for a second because you can tell Axl kind of borrows from some of this kind of sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. That kind of, you know, take me down to the paradise city. That kind of sound. He borrows from the sound too. You can really hear it in the nasality and stuff. But is that Axl Rose was also, also really anal about, uh, you know, being, um, gosh, really wanting to have everything perfect and, and, and working a production and throwing out a lot of different ideas. And Steven Tyler was the same way. Maybe you should say it the other way. Steven Tyler first, Axel later. But um, my understanding was that he just really, really, really wanted everything to be perfect. So he tried all kinds of different things. And you can really see that in a lot of the Aerosmith stuff. Well, all the soundtrack stuff, they go have a lot of left turns in their music and they come back and very diverse stuff. One minute it could be, you know, uh, him singing kind of like a crooner. The next minute he could be singing, you know, something really high and screamy. The next minute he could be, you know, you know, kind of like, you know, I don't know, almost Elvis kind of related. Like he had a lot of different flavors and big band, rag doll, living in a movie. Ah, damn. That is little cutie, right? So, you know, roaring 20s, 40s stuff. So he has a real big palette for a lot of cool stuff. So I want to I wanna really point out that as much as we're talking about his voice, we're really talking about the artist of Steven Tyler. So let's be clear, it's what makes him cool. It's like if I came to you and talked to you about Mick Jagger, you'd go, well, his vocals maybe not the best, right? Because it's a character voice. And his is kind of a character voice, so he's more of a singer for sure. Um, but you'd say to yourself, yeah, you're right. It's more about the character, almost caricature, but the character of Steven Tyler that we've come to know and love over the years. And I think what, you know, American Idol and all of the stuff that's kind of made him famous, right? Let's continue. Here we go. Half my life's in books, written pages. Living, learning from fools and from sages. So try this with me. Half my life's in books, written pages. Living, learning. Street fools and from sages. I forgot the lyric, sorry. But you hear that it's not that hard. What is it? Let's check out the Nova, yeah. What? Have my so it's half, so it's have my life. 
graphs and books written pages. So the highest note is in, you know, an F4. It's a really low note, so to speak. Now for a baritone, that's one of the highest notes in the baritone register. So if you're Barry, uh, that was used to be my highest note, but now I can I can barrel way through that. Right, we, I can kind of go through the whole spectrum of the voice. But so anyway, so the notes aren't that high and they're really easy to manage as you're going through it. And he's got good placement, so he makes it sound high because his voice is placed high and he has a higher pitched voice, okay? So it makes it easier for him to do that. Let's check it out one more time. Half my life's in books, written pages. Living, learning from fools and from sages. You know it's true. Sing for my tears, sing away now for just for today, maybe tomorrow the good Lord will take you away. Now, when I was younger, not even that much younger, and I used to think of this, that I didn't, I thought I was sing women, sing for the year, sing for life, sing for the year, sing women, sing women. I used to sing women, sing for the years, right? I used to think it was sing women, it's sing with me, sing for the years, sing for the laughter, sing for the tears. He slurs so bad in this, I can't even make out the lyrics without reading it. Listen to this. Let me go back, here we go. Back to you. Sing with that, sing for the year, sing for the laugh, and sing for the tear. Did you know? Sing with me, sing for the years, sing with the laugh, to sing for the tears. Right? I had no idea that's what he was saying in the song until I looked it up and I had to actually record this thing. I go, oh, wow, that's what he, now I know what he's saying, right? Because it's kind of funny. Okay, let's move on. You guys that have, have tried to this song too, you know that's true, right? So let's move on. Here we go. Sing with me, sing for the year, sing for the laugh and sing for the tear. Sing with me, it's just for today. Maybe tomorrow the good Lord will take you away. Dream on, dream on, dream on, dream it out and dream come true. Now he also kind of started something, other people did it too, but he oftentimes wouldn't finish the end of a, a plurality in something or a, an S, so it wouldn't be, sing with me, sing for the years, yeah, yes, sing, you know, sing for the laugh, sing for the tea, yeah. he wouldn't say tears, years, so it was kind of really kind of streety, I don't want to use the word ghetto, but like real street kind of, kind of singing, and this became really, really popular amongst a lot of, a lot of people back then, and extremely popular uh, throughout the, the mid-2000s, you know, like for especially in rappers, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, ma, yeah, 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 you know, where they just don't even finish the phrase at all. So he kind of started that and why that's interesting, especially within the rap community is, think about it. And you guys know this, I've talked about this before and now I'm hearing other people say this, but when you think about Walk This Way, Walk This Way was kind of the original rap song, right? You know, I said, hey, get it, get it, put your kid in the middle by the swing like it didn't get. So I took a big chance at the high school dance with the missus who was ready to play, right? He was kind of the original rapper and how ironic that I think it was Rick Rubin or something, or maybe it was David Geffen, I'm not Geffen, I'm sorry, or John Kalodner, I can't remember, I think it might've been Rick Rubin, but who got run DMC you know, an original big, you know, one of the, when rap, before rap became super, super popular, there was a band called Run DMC and they covered this song and they, they did a really great fun version of it. If you haven't seen, go to YouTube, check it out. It's really fun. But so then all of a sudden he had the vision and was very prescient and saw, hey, you know, I could get Steven Tyler to do something because their career had tanked. They, Aerosmith was done. Like they had got nothing left. And so he matched you know, Aerosmith with Run DMC and Run DMC kind of, you know, went their way. And then Aerosmith, you know, with the movie soundtracks with John Kalodner and some of the other stuff that happened later, all of a sudden became the Aerosmith they've become to this day. But it was interesting because it was taking that rap association with him slurring the words and his rapping and, you know, being real streety in the way he presented stuff that actually brings this stuff to life uh, with this character and just very typical of the character of him. So let's continue. Dream on, dream on, dream on. Dream is out and dream come true. 
See, it's the dream until your dreams come true. It's a you go dreaming thing, dream coming through. Like, I don't even know what he's saying, right? Now, one of the other things too I like about this section is it's where he starts to lean into the voice and we start to hear some of his grit and distortion. So, on the word dreams. Dream on, or on. dream on, dream on. Dream on, and he starts to get that nice distortion into the sound, and then it, it, he he adds to it as he goes. So let's continue. Dream on, dream on, dream on, dream it out, dream come true. Okay, let's continue. Dream on, dream on, dream on, dream until your dream come true. See, dream on, do. See, dreams come true. He's not doing that at all. Okay, so let's continue here. Check it out. Dream on, dream on, dream on, dream on. Dream on, dream on, dream on. Now, I want to dissect this because this is kind of the only time that he goes up and grabs these notes. Now, he's been eulogized and, and rightfully so to some degree of being one of the few guys that did this way back when. Though there were, you know, Donny Iris at the end, it's Alia, and there was other bands that did some really high range stuff like this. But he was kind of the screaming demon. That's what he's called, right? Way back in the day. But he's not really singing it that heavy at all. He's really light. Just a, it's really kind of just fry. Ah! You know, it's not like a, ah! it's not, he's not like killing it with the sound. Listen closely. It's, it's pretty laid back. Check it out. Dream on, dream on, dream on, dream on. Right here. Dream on, dream on, dream on. Ah! Here I say, dream on. He's not like, yeah. He's not killing it like that. It's dream. It's like really fry up top. And so there's not really a lot of, you know, for as much acclaim as he's gotten as being the guy that does the scream at the end of Dream On, it's not as big. Now, later he actually does, uh, did kind of make it a little bit more robust and, and kind of hit it a little heavier, but it also buys him the right to not kill himself in his upper vocal or his upper um, falsetto register. Uh, and so he doesn't destroy his mid voice because that can actually really hurt your mid voice and bring down your range if you do a lot of screaming like that. All, all the 80s metal guys that were doing it, they lost most of their upper mid voice register not knowing how to manage this sound. Now, I cover all of that in my singing course, you guys, too, if you're interesting. So um, you want to be able to grow this sound clean and robust and then match the tonal quality of your chest voice and then you have a passaggio connection so the two connect together so they're fused as one long ah! you can go in and out of your register make sure it's connected so you don't lose your upper mid voice range so which has happened to most all of the the great classic rock singers and 80s metal singers so let's listen to it one more time and we'll move on Now, if you guys don't mind, when you get a chance, if you want, please go into the description and click on my version of this and hear how I did it, okay? And you can say, hey, was I as good as Steven, as lousy as Steven, whatever, somewhere in between. And it's all, you know, you, you won't hurt my feelings if you don't think I'm, you know, I'm all that. That's fine. I'm not, it's not about that. It's about demonstrating to get to the sound so I can show you guys how to do it, not because I think I'm super awesome and better than Steven Tyler or even in the league. I don't care about that stuff. I just care about showing you guys how to do it, okay? So anyway, um, let's move on. Here we go. Sing with me now, sing for the ear, sing for the laugh, and sing for the tear. Did you notice that as the song progressed, he got more distorted and stayed distorted? It's kind of like he started out with a clean tone and a, a sing with me, sing for the ears, sing for the laugh, to sing for the tears. Right? He's getting more and more distorted as he goes. By the way, I want to point one more thing out to you guys. Um, I forget what time it is. I think it's about five o'clock right now in the evening. And I started singing at 9 a.m. this morning. It was my first session. I did several vocal lessons all day. I've done two other vocal dem uh, three other vocal demonstrations. Uh, I did uh, some Mickey Thomas. I did two Mickey Thomas songs and I think a Journey song. And then now I'm doing this. So I think I'm in my seventh or seventh hour of singing. 
and I'm crystal clear. My voice, you can hear my speaking voice is crystal clear. I can sing light, I can sing clean, I can sing you know, heavy, whatever. And that's because of the technique that I use of the way I compress my air. So I don't let too much air pass across the cords to dry it out and my open throat technique that's giving me a really big, strong, robust sound. I say that because I wanna point this out to you guys that here I've been singing all day long and I've been able to do this stuff all day and I do this day in and day out at my age. Um, whereas most guys my age or all through the 80s, almost all those guys have lost their voices and I'm still going strong, guys. So I point that out because technique is king when it comes to this for, for vocal preservation and health, good vocal health. All right, let's continue. Sing with now, sing for the ear, sing for the laugh and sing for the tear. Sing with now, just for today, maybe tomorrow, do it out and take it away. Sing with now, sing for the ear, sing for the laugh and sing for the tear. Sing with now, just for today, maybe tomorrow, do it out and take it away. Okay, so that's, that's the end of the song. Now, I want to show you something here. I remembered this song being a lot more lush than that. And go back to the original and you'll see what I mean by that. But I remember the vocal being bigger and I remember the vocal kind of seeming like it dominated the track, okay? So we're hearing the naked vocal, the raw vocal here, but I'm gonna add the track. I want you to listen to it with the track. So let's do this with the track now, check it out. Every time that I look in the mirror Past is gone. It went by like dust to dawn. Isn't that the way? Everybody's got the dues in life to pay. Okay, so here's what I did to it. Check it out. That's how I remember it. All these lines in my face getting clearer. The past is gone. It went by like dust to dawn. Okay, now let's take the, the instrumentation out and let's go back to the original with nothing on it. Every time that I look in That's with the nothing. mirror. Here's with effect. All these lines in my face getting clearer With nothing? The past is gone It went by like dust to dawn With track with effect? Isn't that the way? Everybody's got the dues in life to play Okay, here it comes again with no effect, check it out and that's fine but I'm trying to show you guys that you know we can do a lot of stuff with these tracks and really you know like I said sometimes we remember stuff a lot bigger than it really was so I just kind of like to play with it just to have fun with it all I did was add you know about three different reverbs I added a really short room reverb um, and then I added a longer reverb and then I added um, some delay and a real long hall reverb and I chopped off all of the low end I just rolled off almost all like from 500 cycles down I just chopped it off and let it stay nice and bright and long um, and then I added some delay oh I did have a little bit of a doubler too yeah. and, and by the way oops and then there was that but um anyway but so but very subtle too like if again let me show you one more time so so you, I, it's not maybe as subtle you maybe don't think it's subtle but I do so Every time I look in the mirror, with the fact not without all these lines in my face getting clearer with the fact the past is gone Isn't that the way? Everybody's got the dues in life to pay. 
And if you notice too, when you put the track in, it sucks up a lot of the effects, so you don't notice the effect as much. And if you're really careful and you're smart about it, you wanna be really subtle. You don't want people knowing you're just drenching something in reverb, but you want like spatial dimension. You wanna be able to see that vocal kind of everywhere rather than it just maybe being so pointed, um, you know. And there's a lot to be said again for it being naked and pointed, and we've talked a lot about that. But anyway, gang, hope you, you liked what you heard. Hopefully this was informative to you guys. Again, I have a singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it on my website. Please like and subscribe to my channel and absolutely definitely please check out my next video.